Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we have Mark Mullins, who is the Product Marketing Manager for Fluke Networks. So welcome to the jam, Mark. Well, thank you. Uh, thanks for having me today. No worries at all. So um, for you, for your first question, um, for a business that hasn't worked with Fluke, Fluke Networks before, what are your key products and offerings? Well, what we do is we provide test equipment for people who are installing, maintaining, or troubleshooting uh, copper IT cabling and fiber IT cabling. And we really try to focus on two different types of customers who do, who do that. One of them is the system integrators and installers. They tend to do that in you know, large volumes. They're looking for efficiency. How can I cut my costs and be efficient and make sure that every time I do it, I get it done right the first time. And for those customers, we have a product called the Versive line, which is designed specifically to do that, to try and make it as efficient as possible to install fiber and uh, uh, copper cabling and make sure then that it's done right. We test all the standards, uh, hundreds of different worldwide standards, the users can pick what they want. And then behind that, we have a software system called Linkware which allows them to collect and manage their results and then present those results either to the customer or to the manufacturer. In many cases, the manufacturer is offering a warranty for the cable that's being installed and they wanna see that it's done right before they of course offer that warranty. So that's what we offer to the contractors. We also sell a lot of our testers to the private network owners. Now those customers are more concerned about testing small numbers of cables and, and troubleshooting especially. So we make our products as easy to use as possible. We still have the Versive line for troubleshooting fiber with our OptiFiber Pro. And then we also have lower end tools that are more priced to, uh, to appeal to that customer who's not testing hundreds or thousands of cables a week. And the one we just introduced was our Link IQ, which does cable testing. It will tell you the performance of the cable up to 10 gigabits per second, but then it will also allow you to see what's going on on the other end of that cable. If it's plugged into a switch, we'll tell you about the switch name, the switch port number, and tell you what's going on in terms of power over ethernet. Brilliant, yeah. Um, so what are the most recent improvements or innovations in your products and offerings? Well, the biggest one, of course, is the, uh, the Link IQ, which we just offered. You know, for a long time, we've been selling a cable testing products, and these are not the certification products, excuse me, that uh, the contractors and the manufacturers demand. This is more for someone who they move into a building, they're running networks on it, and then they go, wow, I'd like to, like to upgrade to say one gigabit ethernet or maybe 10 gig ethernet. I wonder if this cable will support that. And they can just run quick tests with this product to ensure it's got a little, basically a little speedometer on it that says, okay, here's how fast you can run data across this cable. So very simple, very easy for a private network owner to do. They can also generate reports on that if they want to keep records on it. But as I mentioned, the other thing it does, it allows you to see, well, where does this port go? You know, a lot of times we hear about customers, they move into a new office or they're moving people around and there's a port on the wall and I wonder where this goes. And they plug into it and it doesn't work. Well, why? I wonder why it doesn't work. Is it connected to the wrong switch? Is it connected to anything? So they can plug in, they can see what it's connected to. Maybe it's on the wrong VLAN, right? We'll show you that kind of thing. Maybe there's no power over ethernet. So if you're trying to install a security camera or an IP phone, this is a great tool to help you really quickly figure out, is the cable gonna be able to handle it? And am I plugged into something that's going to be able to actually do the job? We've also come out some uh, more recently with some a number of fiber testing products. One of which is our FI3000 fiber inspection scope which is designed for uh, the large data centers that use the multiple push on fiber optic uh, connectors for their trunks. And they need to be able to inspect like a 16 uh, port uh, MPO connection and make sure that it's clean. So this allows them to do that very quickly and efficiently. Right, yeah. Um, so what trends are your product development teams working on or looking forward to um, in the future or presently? I'd say that like right on the horizon right now, there's a lot of development and work going on with power over ethernet, both as I discussed, you know, being able to tell if the infrastructure, you know, your switch or your, uh, your, your mid span injector or whatever can provide the amount of power that you need and making sure that it's really there when you need it. 
And then the other thing is, is making sure that the cabling is ready to handle it. Um, there are tests beyond what are required in the standard to really make sure that the high power four pair ethernet, uh, four pair power over ethernet that goes up to 90 watts will really work. And our certification testers will test that. So we highly recommend when customers get their cabling installed, if they think they're going to use power over ethernet on it, and who knows, you know, cabling lasts 20, 30 years in, a, in an office environment, that you have it checked and make sure you run the extra tests to make sure that the POE is ready to work. It's not really a, an extra much, much time extra. And then that gives you that confidence that your cable plant is going to be able to support that. And then you'll be able to hook up, you know, uh, uh, more powerful access points, you know, full-size monitors, security devices, and so on that might need extra power um, on your existing cabling. Uh, another thing that we're spending a lot of time on is fiber. And, uh, you know, one of the things we're seeing as a trend is fewer people are going into the offices, but that doesn't mean that there's less cable being installed. It's just that it's, you know, we're seeing less copper and a lot more fiber. And we work with a lot of the, uh, the large companies that are building out the hyperscale data centers. And of course, those are all built on fiber, a lot of single mode fiber, and a lot of the new short haul single mode fiber transceivers require very low loss. And so our testers, you know, we're getting more of those spec'd in, we're selling more of them to be able to uh, support those data centers and their, uh, you know, their very, very stringent loss requirements, sometimes less than two dB on a link, which is not very much. And the next one that's on the horizon, we actually don't have a product for this and people aren't installing it yet, but we see it as kind of the next big thing, which is single pair ethernet. And what that's going to allow you to do is to run ethernet at lower rates, but much longer distances up to, up to a kilometer, I believe right now, and you can put multiple devices on a single link and you can power them as well. And we see a huge market for that in uh, building automation. It's probably going to be in industrial automation and, uh, and even probably within automobiles. So being able to test that single pair ethernet, that's something we're very much involved with. We're involved with the committees working on it, the manufacturers that are developing the products. We've got prototypes and whatnot of various uh, test solutions for single pair ethernet. We've even shown a couple of them at some shows. And uh, so we're, we're keeping an eye on that. We're not sure when it's going to start catching on in the market, but probably within the next two years. Awesome, sounds good. Um, so we focus a lot on the Asia Pacific market. So with that in mind, what infrastructure or resources do you have in the APAC market specifically? Well, you know, uh, one thing I've learned about this business after all these years is that while we make great products, I'd say 51% of the reason that customers buy from us is because of our people. Um, we've got a lot of really great people all around the world and Asia Pac really isn't any different. I probably shouldn't go in and start naming off various people, but you know, if I look at the people that we've got in the market there, uh, China, Japan, Australia, Singapore, all around Southeast Asia, Taiwan, everywhere, I see hundreds of years of experience that those people have. You know, I, I would know, I, I've been with the company uh, since Fluke Network started back in uh, 1992. And a lot of, I've seen these people come and to me, they maybe they're new timers, but you know, they've been here a decade or two and they've got just a ton of experience. They know our products inside and out. And so, you know, we, every country I mentioned there, uh, India as well, Thailand, um, we've got people on the ground, as they like to say in the US, that uh, can really help you answer your questions. They can uh, help you understand complex technical issues, even consult with you, like how do I test these certain things? A lot of the things we get involved in testing with, most of it's pretty straightforward, right? I just need to measure loss on a, on a simple fiber, that's okay you start to put together more complicated things like the new uh, modular plug terminated link. Um, we work with manufacturers that test patch cords. We, um, and on fiber, you know, a lot of customers are using you know, engineered limits. They want very specific limits for the data centers they're building. Those sorts of things get kind of complicated. And that's where we build our products to, to make that as easy as possible. But most of the customers really like to talk to somebody, right? In the same time zone, the same country, the same language. And I think that's what we, we do. 
You know, one other thing that we offer is we offer uh, training courses. We call it our certified uh, cable test technician, uh, especially for the installers, so that people out there can get trained up and understand, you know, how do I hook up? How do I hook this up? How do I set it up to do a test so I get it right and I give the customer the information they need? And that's something we offer all throughout the region as well. We've had over 10,000 people graduate from that program worldwide. So, you know, we've got a lot of resources, a lot of help for people in the Asia Pacific and really pretty much any market around the world. Awesome, cool. And finally for you, Mark, um, yeah, you mentioned uh, customers getting in touch. So um, if an enterprise end user wanted to engage with Fluke Networks, what's the best way? Well, probably the easiest way is to just go to our website and, um, you know, look us up there. We have, uh, you know, we have, local numbers in every country, you can just call us. We've also got a, uh, a tax center, which a technical assistance center, as we call it, where you can actually talk to people who understand this sort of stuff. You know, the guys who answer the phone for us, a lot of them have, uh, you know, a decade or more of experience as well. And we know a lot of customers, you know, you don't understand this stuff, especially enterprise customers. They don't talk about it that much, you know, and so they want somebody who can give them quick answers. Our website's a great place to get that. We've got a knowledge base with, uh, over a thousand articles that we've written on cable testing. We've got a YouTube channel with uh, hundreds of hours of video that you know they train you on how to use the product, uh, tips and tricks, um, and even a training course built into there. So I, you know, I'd start with a website. You can also follow us on social media, and then there's always info at flukenetworks.com. If you send an email, um, somebody will figure it out. A lot of times if nobody else can figure it out, they show up in my inbox and then I figure out, uh, you know, maybe I'll answer the question or maybe I'll uh, route you to the person who knows. Uh, a lot of people think I know everything. That's just because I know who to ask. We've got a lot of smart people around and I know who to ask and then I'll send the response on. Uh, we'll even respond to you on, uh, like I said, social media. You can ask questions there. We try to get back as quick as possible. So I guess maybe the, maybe the answer to that is, how can you not reach us? I, I can't really think of too many ways that won't work. Brilliant. Well, yeah, sounds good. Thank, uh, well, that's it for today's interview. Thanks for joining me today, Mark. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, have a great day.